Hey everybody, Coach Toolshed here. At the end of my previous video, I had asked all of you to go ahead and let me know which game out of the list I gave you, you would like me to go ahead and review. I have beaten several games over the last few weeks, and I wanted to get out a couple of reviews. By far, the most requested game that I listed was Frostpunk. Now, this is a game from last year, came out in 2018. It's been out for about a year and a half now, but it has just recently come to consoles as well. So, I wanted to go ahead. I've played through the game now. I've beaten several of the scenarios. I've been playing around in endless mode, been messing around with my strategies, trying to figure out some new stuff, and I am ready to give you a review for Frostpunk. So, what is Frostpunk? A lot of people have been asking me. Well, it's essentially a city builder at its core, but it's a bit different than a lot of other city builders that you might have played. One of the interesting things I think about Frostpunk is I think it's accessible enough where if you've never played a city builder type game, this game will not overwhelm you and you can jump right in. It's very manageable right out of the gates to figure out what's going on and it's all about perfecting your strategy and trying to maximize the efficiency of the city as you're building it. So it's really all about your own ability to strategize and plan ahead. It does not overwhelm you. At the same time, the strategizing is so good and there's certain role-playing type decisions and decisions that you have to make throughout these campaigns where even if you're a veteran of this type of genre you will still find enjoyment in this type of game and i'm going to get into all this right now now at its core this game is mainly about fighting off the cold i'm not going to go into too many spoilers here but basically the entire planet has frozen over and it is up to you to lead this city against the bitter cold and keep these people both healthy and keep them fed and most importantly keep them warm and that is basically the entire premise of the game now there's different story scenarios there's four different ones you can play through there's different maps you can play through and we'll get into all that in just a bit but right now let's concentrate on the systems of the game basically what you're going to have to do you're going to have to mine resources you're going to have to go out and mine coal which you'll use to heat the big generator in the middle of the city which can keep your people warm which you need to keep them healthy of course you're going to set up medical tents you're going to have to staff those up to keep people who get sick from dying on you you do not want people dying that can cause major Major spiraling effects which can lead your city to the point of ruin you also are gonna have to worry about food management and I will say after playing through several different scenarios food management is probably your most important thing that you need to worry about right out of the gates because at the end of the game you're always going to be encountered with the, the temperatures getting colder and colder and colder and eventually gathering food is going to be a problem and you are going to have to have enough food stored up where you can survive the onslaught of the coming winter. That's not really a spoiler alert. It should be obvious from the way the game is set up and what you're looking at. Things just continue to get colder. That's one of the main premises of the game. Now, there are different story scenarios. There is, a, there is a scenario that serves as the main campaign, and then there's three additional scenarios as well. And there's different ways you can go about beating each scenario. Some people will swear by one different strategy. Some people will swear that doing the exact opposite thing is the only way that works. And to me, that signals that the game is actually pretty balanced. There's several different ways you can actually go about your win scenario. And let's get into some of the things that these scenarios do. I'm not going to want to spoil anything for you, but I just want to give you sort of the general outline of what you can expect as you go through the game. So right off the bat, everything is available to you. All the systems are available to you right away. You can build a workshop. You can get people in there starting to resource different technology. Pretty standard for a city builder type game. But everything is there for you right away. You can just start working your way through the technology tree. So if you want to beeline right towards the end, you can just start pumping resources into doing that and you can start getting your city up and running any way you see fit. There's also something interesting in this game that I don't see a lot of times and there's different laws that you can pass and the different branches you can go down and in this game I will tell you one thing, there is no humor in this game and the laws that you pass can have very serious consequences and some of them can be a little bit gruesome. You're going to have to worry about stuff like do you how you're going to handle medical patients people who are dying you need to worry about what you're going to do with the kids because there are children in this game do you set them to work do you put them in dangerous jobs do you keep them safe during the day so they don't get sick don't get injured on the job what do you do what do you do when people start dying do you build a cemetery and have people give proper burials and then thereby taking away your valuable production time? Do you shut down the whole city for a death or do you just toss the bodies in a snow put? It's all part of what you need to do in this game to manage the city. You have to manage the hope and discontent of your people as well. If your hope gets down to zero, 
well, you might get kicked out of the city. They might run you right out of town. Same way, if the discontent level gets maxed out, well, they'll run you right out of town just the same way. So you have to manage the things. You can't just do the most pragmatic solution at all times. Also, one of the things that I found to my own detriment in one of my playthroughs, as I got closer to the end objective of the game, and it, every, I thought everything was all set. I thought I was going to be ready to go. I thought I was doing great getting my city prepared for the final act of this scenario. And a decision that I had made at the very, very early part of the game where I decided to tell a lie to my people to keep the hope up and not have a little bit of a riot on my hands, a lie that I had told a long time earlier in the game came back to bite me and people started leaving my city in droves and that came back to bite me. And in the end, I just managed to finish the scenario, but I was not able to save all the people from my town. So that's just, those are the sort of decision making you have to do. It's almost like an RPG in certain ways like that. Now there's not like a leveling system or anything like that, but the decision making stuff will come back to bite you in a story sense it's not just strategizing it's not just making your city as efficient as possible you also have to figure out how you want to handle the public they will throw very many different scenarios at you throughout the stories and it adds a lot of different flavors to the game and depending on what buildings you pick what laws you pass how you choose to go about treating your citizens different scenarios will emerge it's not going to be the same stuff happening every time it is going to react dynamically to some of the choices you make now, some of the story scenarios, some of the beats are going to happen regardless. There are main plot lines in each one of the scenarios that you are going to have to deal with. Some of them can greatly impact what you're doing in your city. Some of them not so much. But just be aware, there are certain in-game timers. Like once you get to day whatever, day 13, 14, whatever, something is automatically going to happen in some of these scenarios. And they're all different. I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but you'll have to react to those dynamically. Now... If you don't want to play the game in these story scenarios, there also are endless modes. Let's get into that real quick. So basically, if you don't want to be tethered down to a main story and you just want to keep playing the game, there's two different types of endless mode. There's called serenity mode and endurance mode, and it should be kind of pretty obvious what they are. The serenity mode is more for if you just want to have a mildly challenging experience, there still will have the cold and the storm, but it'll be very mild and you'll have a lot more pleasant weather in this game to deal with so you don't have to worry about the cold so much. You just sort of build your city up forever and have a nice, easy, relaxing playthrough. There's also the endurance mode, which really cranks up the challenge. You'll have less resources. The storms will be coming and hitting your city a lot harder and a lot faster. And basically, both of these modes, as the name implies, they're endless, so you can just keep playing on and on and on until you want to basically put the game down as long as you can survive and keep your city running. So, if you're, if you're not inter interested with any of the scenarios or the stories, although they are quite interesting, I will say, you can, you can just play this as a standard city builder that doesn't have any story attached to it, whatever, it also has that option, which is nice for people who maybe get sick of playing through the same scenario over and over again. You can just build your city and just keep building and building and building. And the nice thing is as well, they have four different maps that you can play through in that mode. So they offer different challenges as well. Now, as you may have noticed in the footage, you can also send out scout teams. They don't really do too much. They just kind of go out and they will find different resource nodes out. And you can figure out, do you want to take these back now? Do you want to continue to push forward? Sometimes you'll have different decisions to make. When you go out there, there is a chance where you can send a scout out and they can die in one of the scenarios, but that's pretty rare. But you will have decisions to make, and as the game progresses, as the storm starts closing in, you have to figure out, is it worth it, or is your team going to be able to make it to the next resource node that you've discovered before the storm closes in, and they will get caught out in the storm if you leave them out there too long. So that's all part of it. You have to manage that. And really... This game is all about managing the efficiency of your city. It's all about getting the most production as possible as you can at all times. And you're going to have cold snaps. You might notice up in the top right hand corner of the screen as I'm playing here, you'll see the day counter up in the top and it will tell you is the temperature going to rise, is the temperature going to fall. You need to factor that in as well because you don't want people working in cold locations. Sometimes it's going to get to the point where it's so cold in your city that you might want to pull people off of work just so they don't get sick if your medical facilities are overwhelmed with sick people it might be better off to just keep some places shut down that's something you're going to have to manage you're not always going to have a constant flow of progression now sometimes there are buildings 
where they're impervious to the cold. You can send out the scout teams. The scout teams are not going to get cold and sick out in the wilderness unless they get caught out in that storm that I mentioned. But you do have to very much manage the people who remain in your city. You want to have a healthy workforce because the thing that will screw you up the most and cause you the most problem is if you people aren't eating, if they're stuck out in the cold, if your medical facilities are being overwhelmed, then you will go into a downward spiral very quickly and people will start dying off and then bad things will happen. You want to avoid that at all costs. You might see also as I'm playing, you can put down little heat resource nodes. Now the scenario I'm playing right now is actually a interesting one. This is not the main story campaign, but this one you start out with a city that was already destroyed and so you have to take over that city and sort of bring it back from the brink now the main campaign is the exact opposite you start out with a clean slate and it is up to you to build the entire city up as you see fit and sort of prepare for the different scenarios that the game throws at you throughout that something else that's really interesting about this game that it does is each person in your town is individually rendered and if you wanted to you could just zoom in on one person and they have their names and their little sort of a sort of a backstory it'll tell you like who they're married to who their kids are in the town and whatnot not not too much information but each little person is individually rendered and you can watch them go through the whole day you can watch them go and eat they'll go into their tent to sleep at night you can watch them going to work if you reassign them to a new job they don't just automatically start producing at the new job you have to watch them stop at their old job they'll walk across the city you can watch them the whole time go into the next job and then you will see the production meter start rising from sending those people over there so it's just a nice little touch it's absolutely not necessarily for the game you don't have to pay attention to that at all but if you wanted to you could just sit there and sort of zone out and watch your little people go through the town you can zoom right in and watch them it's beautifully rendered you can watch them walking through the snow when you turn on the heat generator the snow like sort of instantly melts around it it's there's a lot of nice little features to the game and the music is fantastic it fits the game perfectly i should i should mention that because i don't usually mention music in the game but when it stands out to me i think that it needs to be noticed and the the musical score for this game it rises and falls based on what's going on in your town and near the end it will reach a maximum crescendo and it really it's it's perfect throughout the entire game one of the great musical scores that really just complements the game. I'm not going to sit here and jam out to it in my car necessarily, but when you're playing the game, it really does suit it quite well. This is a sort of game where a lot of times I would be listening to a podcast, but in this game, I liked the ambiance of the game so much that I wasn't even really listening to podcasts while I was playing this game, which is rare. Usually when I play a strategy game, I'm just listening to podcasts the whole time, but this game, the score was so great, I just wanted to listen to it. I really thought it added to the atmosphere of the game. Just thought I should throw that in there as well. Now we've got to this point of the review and if I haven't done a good job of selling you on this game yet, that's a failing on my part because let me just come right out and say it. This is one of my favorite games that I've played over the last two years. It might not have the most replay value ever, but you can still get a lot of gameplay out of this and with the endless mode you can of course play forever if you want. The stories kept me very compelled. The different scenarios were interesting right out of the bat. Some of them were harder than others. Some of them not so much. Playing on the survivor difficulty is quite a challenge, I will say. I'm still trying to beat a scenario for the first time on Survivor. And I, I can't say enough about how good I think this game is. This is an excellent example, both in the genre of city builders. I love it as a city builder game. And I also think that it's great just in general this is as i said one of the best games that i've played over the last two years quite easily this would be near the top of my list and i can't recommend it enough this is one of those rare games where as soon as i started playing i was contacting some of my friends and saying hey i think you might like this check this game out i don't usually do that a lot of times i just play a game and keep it to myself but this is one game where i absolutely was telling my friends hey i just picked this game up i am totally hooked i think you might like this and absolutely check this game out so if you are at all interested if city builders are your type of thing i would say check it out and even if you're someone who's never played a city builder before if this sort of game interests you if this particular game does interest you i would say go ahead and check it out it's very accessible and it still does offer a good challenge for people who are familiar with the genre i can't say enough good things about it anyway that's it for me coach toolshed let me know what you guys think down in the comments below please subscribe if you want to stay in tune with the channel head forward and as always Keep it turned to 11. And if any of you want to see any other reviews from some of the games I listed earlier in my last video, go ahead and let me know about that down in the comments below as well. Anyway, 
I'll talk to you guys later.